Coming up this week, the boys receive a visit from some lifelong fans. Hi. No, no, Who are you? I'm Kyle. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. We reveal while Essendon is a sharpshooter in front of the big sticks. Andrew Welsh tees it up in the designer fashion stakes. And this is the final part of the printing process. Once all the colours have been laid onto the t-shirts, they come through here and go into the big oven. And you won't believe who belongs to this look. Hello and welcome to The Bomber Show. We'll find out who that mystery man is very soon. But first, it's time to welcome my co-host, David Zaharakis. David, thank you very much for coming along. We're going to have some fun in the next yep. 20 minutes or so. You're having the best season of your short career so far and perhaps finals and your, your first final is not too far away. Yeah, yeah, hopefully we get over the line this week against Port Adelaide and then, yeah, whatever happens from there happens from there. And, yeah, it'll be good to play a final. I um, haven't had played a final in three years because I missed the one in my first year. So, yeah, it'll be good. Things are pretty exciting at the moment, but unfortunately there's been some bad news this week with Stuart Crammery no longer going to be part of Essendon's finals campaign if they're to make it that far and certainly the rest of the season. We can have a listen to what he's had to say earlier in the week. Yeah, I knew straight away that um, I'd done my shoulder. I did it about four years ago, so um, yeah, it's disappointing. Happened again on the same shoulder. The surgery's on Friday, so that will rule me out for the final series if we make it. So it was good to get a game every week nearly, and um, it was a good experience. So I've, I was out here today on, on the track and I've already missed it, so it's gonna be hard for a few weeks, but um, yeah, can't wait till the next season, 2012. Well, one of the success stories of 2011 and certainly we look forward to seeing him bigger and better next year. A real revelation for the Bombers in the forward line. Well, that's one change that James Hurd's going to have to make for this weekend's clash against Port Adelaide. Let's have a look at some of the others he's made. Round 23, Essendon versus Port Adelaide. Obviously, Essendon's last home and away game for the season and one that we need to win uh, if we want any chance of playing in the finals. Um, a bit disappointing last week with the way we finished the game and also to lose Stuart Cramery um, to a season-ending shoulder, shoulder injury and Heath Hocking to suspension, so very disappointed in that. But into the team uh, come Tate Pears and Michael Hurley and also Ricky Dyson. Um, extended bench of Lovett Murray, Bell Chambers, Welsh, Dyson, Remus and Hardingham. Uh, four of the three will play. Obviously, Port Adelaide haven't had a great year this year, but uh, we're very good in the last quarter against the Western Bulldogs. So expecting a hard game, one we need, need to play very well in. Um, from a, on a sad note, our sympathies go out to the McVeigh family uh, and everything that's happened in their family with uh, Mark's brother Jared and his baby um, overnight. So, very sad note for the Essendon Football Club, very close to the McVeigh family and we, our thoughts are with them. And the thoughts of the entire football community are with Jared McVeigh, his wife Clementine and the entire McVeigh family. We wish them all the best during this very sad time. Well, there are the ins and outs, Dyson, Hurley, Pears and Collier. Out, Hocking and Cramery. That's a pretty impressive list of inclusions, Dave. Yeah, it is. It's good to have the um, two tools coming in in pairs and, and hurls. Um, up, one up forward, one down back, so they're good inclusions. And yeah, a bit disappointing that um, Stu Cramery uh, got injured. He's, he's had a great year and it's actually a pretty great story to come from a rookie list and even from Bendigo a couple of years ago to now have a real impact and be our leading goal kicker this year. It's been great and he'll be sorely missed. Given that Pears and Hooker come into the side, does that mean it's more likely we'll see Michael Hurley playing in the forward line? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Hurley's got a plan for that. But, yeah, Hurley's has been great down both positions, both positions this year, down forward and down back. So I reckon wherever he plays, he always has an impact. Your own season, we mentioned before that you're, you're having a bit of a breakout year. How much has the, the new coaching group and and everything that's gone on at Windy Hill helped you really take that next step? Yeah, it's been good probably personally. At the start of the year, I was more forward um, swapping on ball and sort of towards the second half of the year being um, more on ball swapping forward. So Simon Goodwin's um, helped me a lot uh, this year in, as a midfield coach and even James Heard give me a lot of tips and pointers because he played sort of that half forward mid role as well. So yeah, they've been good. And um, yeah, personally, it's been a, a, a good year. OK, well, we all know plenty of lifelong supporters, but a small group of Essendon fans have pledged their allegiance into the afterlife as well. Bombers Forever is a group who have included the club in their wills. They paid a visit to training this week. Mum's got a scrapbook on John Coleman. 
It's got all the old photos of him, and it goes back. It is absolutely amazing. Really? This, this scrapbook of his, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I've got you. But I'll get you again. Okay. How are you? Who are you? I'm Kyle. Oh, Kyle Lewis. Oh, Look, I can't recognise you guys. You've got your numbers off. You should see who is it? Oh, Bradley Blaine, he looks like a drug head. <laughs> oh, he does. Look at him, he looks like a drug head, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, he does. He's like, I'm no, no. <laughs> Look at him. Sacker, it's hard to forget Carl Reimers, isn't it? He'd be a little bit surprised by that one. Yeah, I heard about that today, actually. He was pretty shadowy, that. He was sort of taken back and. Yeah, didn't know why the old, um, why that woman didn't know who he was, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it'd be pretty funny for the boys to laugh at. <laughs> Certainly is. Well, still to come, Dean Wallace joins us the, in our studio, and David Zaharakis calls the plays of the week. He is up for a big challenge because Angus Monfrey certainly raised the bar last week. And now we got stance. I think he had 39 disposals on the weekend, two goals. It was a brilliant game. There's a high fly from the young Monfrey's there. <laughs> Energy prices are on the rise, and we're all aware of the benefits of using solar to power our home. True Value Solar are the solar specialists, and one of Australia's largest installers of solar power. So call True Value Solar for your solution today. Yeah, you tell them, Hootie. Call 13 Solar for the best deals under the sun. Television is about to change forever. The revolutionary new Samsung Smart TV will immerse you in full HD 3D vision that will take your breath away. You'll be able to access your compatible multimedia library with Search All, along with your favorite websites. The new Samsung Smart TV. Immerse yourself in a world of endless entertainment. Well, welcome back. We love your involvement in the show and remember you can hashtag the Bomber Show to have your say and put some questions to the boys. We're going to have a look now at the tweet of the week with Crammers out, Hawking suspended and Hurley back. I think it's time for the long-awaited return of Gumby. That is from Paul Casey and it is fitting now that I welcome assistant coach Dean Wallace in. You can yeah. tell us where is Scott Gumbleton at at the moment. Yeah, poor old Gumby's had a, an interrupted season with um, obviously some injuries and uh, yeah, he's basically back in the, the VFL side there with um, Shannon Grant so uh, hopefully he can put some good form together and lead into the finals and uh, he won't be far away, hopefully. Speaking of the finals, a huge match this weekend against Port Adelaide. There is a chance with a, a massive win and a massive mm. thumping and obviously you've got to tick the win off first but there is the lure of a home final. Is that something that you can use to motivate the guys or is it just win first and worry about the rest later? No, I think Without so. saying the cliches, please, <laughs> Wally. <laughs> no, it's, uh, you'd, you'd love to go out there and, and put the game you know, within doubt very early, but uh, Port's a proud footy club. They haven't had a great year. No one wants to finish on the bottom of the ladder, um, even though Dean Bailey said they might have a few years ago. Uh, years ago. But now Port are a proud side, so if we're not on our guard, the, the modern game suggests and tells you if you're not, you could probably get your pants pulled down. So we don't want that to happen. Your role at the club since returning from Fremantle is as development coach. Mm -hmm. Tell us about what that entails and who exactly you're working with. Yeah, it's an interesting role. It's probably a little unique role where it's working with most of the players on the list and uh, that's what we spoke about with Herdy when I first come back. It was a matter of who's got untapped potential at the footy club and who's running at the ma maximum potential. And there was an error for everyone to sort of improve a bit. So. There's definitely a focus on the one to three years and the, the young boys and some of the boys are in a little bit of an apprenticeship stage, but it's mainly, um, yeah, basically everyone on the club. Well, you're also in your role in charge of mm. goal kicking, which some people might find a bit surprising given you made your name as a, a rugged defender, 42 <laughs> goals in your career, also 38 points. Now, we went through the archives and we had a bit of trouble finding uh, some goals, <laughs> so here's some of your best work. I assume you didn't show this when you were um, going for the job as goal kicking coach. Nice point there. Got more hair back then too. Jesus, right? what's going on there? It's a, I've only had the mullet. <laughs> <laughs> 
But obviously it's such an important part of the mm. modern game. Opportunities in front of goal are, yeah. are precious. But it does seem to be something that hasn't improved much over, over the years. No, and I think it's something that probably does get neglected uh, in, in most programs and it sort of gets tacked on at the end of a program. And I think, um, yeah, I think where we need to get to is um, really enhance it in your program and make it a, a, a better... Uh, more time, more valuable time for it. Well, you must be doing a good job because the Bombers sit third in terms of accurate accuracy at 62.5%. And if you have a look at those, some are quite surprising. I mean, Port Adelaide, who are having a horror season, are mm. second on the ladder. And then you look at Sydney, who are in contention for a top eight spot. They're right down the bottom uh, near the Gold Coast on 16th. How can you explain that? Yeah, we've got a little bit of a competition going at the club and there's some bragging rights and some egos, big egos at footy clubs that we're... <laughs> This young fella here, I think, uh, where do you sit on the, the goal-kicking tally? Yeah, I'm on top. Angus Moffrey's all trying to beat me, but yeah, I got him on top at the moment. Yeah, so they, they, they work pretty hard at it. And they, uh, yeah, we try, I think, how many shots you've had for the year that we've monitored? Uh, I think about thirteen or 1,400 shots yeah. we've had at the moment. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot of shots to have, um, but yeah, you need probably all the practice you can get. Well, we can have a look now at you, Dean, uh, with your goal-kicking coaching prowess with Josh Jenkins. So start with taking the mark and then work, work back. Just a couple of steps. Kick the three iron, not a nine iron. Very good. One more. Set it up like that. Set it up. Hold it in your hand. How are you going to hold it? Press your body. Keep it too high. Keep it high. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. That's it, mate. Job's done. Coming from the goal kicking extraordinaire, Wally. Stay tuned. <laughs> Look out, Plugger and Jason Dunst. Or maybe you were playing at the wrong end of uh, the ground all your career. Uh, Wally, I want to ask you how much of what your role in terms of coaching is about technique and the right technique, and how much of it is about routine and setting up for the goal each time? Yeah, I think like Sammy Newman's been a big. I mean, he, as crazy we say Sam is, he's got some real merit behind it. Goal kicking's an attitude, and attitude's the way you think. And if you think you can, and Bomber's got a great cliche, if you think you can, you will. If you think you can't, you won't. So a lot of people get the foot in front of the goal, and they panic, and they think, oh, what if, what if? As soon as you put yourself in that mindset, you're bound to miss. So um, I have a bit of a mentality or a philosophy. It's your most natural kick is your, the instinct kick that you use around the ground. So just replicate that as best you can. So don't try and think about it too much. Put, pick an end point and try and hit the end point. Well, here's a man who did it brilliantly throughout his career with the Bombers. 69%. He's only behind the great Tony Lockett, who's at 70% in terms of all-time accuracy. Zachel, what have you learned, I suppose, from Lloydie and his goal-kicking technique? Um, oh, he had a set routine every time he, he went back and <laughs> had a shot. Um, yeah, it's just that's what you need. You need something that it's a trigger point that every time you go back, Lloydie threw up the grass. Um, so he knew once he did that, he was ready to take the shot. Um, for me, it's always, um, I've worked with Wally and I look at something behind the goals as a trigger point to know that that's the, that's the target I want to hit. So when you go back, you, you set up and I look up and I see see something I've, I've picked out as I'm walking back and that's my cue to now uh, walk in and start kicking the goal and you just aim for that. So um, yeah, I've worked a lot with Wally and it sort of helped my game this year for goal kicking. Do you know why I heard he, uh, Lloyd, he picked up the grass? It was a marketing tool because he started to sell grass <laughs> outside the front of footy grounds. Well, there you go. <laughs> it was in it for money. It was nothing to do with his routine. Oh, there you go. Well, he sounds like you're doing a great job. Third on the conversion table. Uh, hopefully you can continue that um, on and maybe jump up to number one spot. Thank you very much for coming in. It's a team effort, Sarah. Very good. Okay, well, up next we unearth some photos of the coach that you simply have to see. We also hear from the chairman, but on the way to the break, Michael Long continues to drop the kilos with Jen for men, and you can see it for yourself each week on the match committee. Well, there's someone called Tracy's here. I'll let her be for me. No, she said she wanted to see if Longy was still here. Yeah, that's right. I need you to sign that stuff. Energy prices are on the rise, and we're all aware of the benefits of using solar to power our home. True Value Solar is Australia's largest solar specialist, so they can install a system that will really save you. Whoa! 
What you do with those savings each year is up to you. It's official. The carbon tax will mean rising electricity prices. With thousands of dollars of government rebates still available, there's never been a better time to go solar. Call 13 Solar for the best deals under the sun. What if I told you I've signed a Norm Smith medalist and a Coleman medalist? Great. Do you want to meet him? I'll be with you in a minute, coach. How are we going to get a match fit? Join Longy and Scotty as they get match fit again. Lose 10 kilos for $10. Call or SMS footy to 1300 for Jenny. Well, you do with an extra set of hands. Might need a new receptionist at Windy Hill. Well, it is now time to hear from the chairman of the Essendon Football Club, David Evans. Hi, everyone. Great to have you with us again this week. Well, it's been another huge week at the Football Club this week and the flightplan.com.au is going well. But if you haven't logged on, please do so. It is a huge project, a very ambitious project for our club, but we need everybody to play their part. Well, we're planning to give you something back this week. It's Essendon Membership Recognition Round this week, and it's something that we're looking forward very much to. So you'll see on Sunday afternoon a heap of things going on and around and inside the ground, and it's something I think you'll really appreciate once you get there. Everything I do is for the members. So this week it is important for us to thank our members for being as passionate and as supportive as they have been this year. Well, of course, our finals fate is in our own hands at 4.40 at Etihad on Sunday afternoon. And it's so important that every member Barracker supporter gets there for that red and black army to support our boys. Looking forward to it immensely. Go Bombers. Absolutely. Well, it's time now to reveal the Bombers fashionista that we saw at the very start of the show and just reveal his identity. <laughs> who do you think this is? Zaka? I, I know who this is. And yeah, that's not a good <gasps> look hair. at all. <laughs> that is not a good look at all. It's um, very straight <laughs> and blonde. It looks like he's taken a hair straightener to it. He'll cop a bit of flack for this, won't he? Yeah, he reminds me a bit of um, Edward Scissorhand just with blonde hair, I think. A bit of that. So, yeah, he will cop a bit of flack for that. And I think the boys have seen one of those photos. I was up in a slideshow earlier in the year and, um, yeah, a few boys laughed at it. 2005, that was James Hurd. So, perhaps it has improved slightly his hair do since slightly. then. Slightly. <laughs> well, maybe Andrew Welsh needs to have a talk to the coach and get him into some of today's more fashionable tees. Well, Bomber fans, you're used to seeing us on the field, so I thought this week I'll show you what I get up to off the field. Today I'm going to show you through our factory in Melbourne, where we do all our printing for our new range of Utopia t-shirts. The label's called People. Come in and have a look. So what we have here is the first part of the printing process. We have the printing press here, and the start is pretty easy. Just put on the basic singlet onto the press, and then that's stage one of the printing. So the next part of the process is we've got the printing screens here because each colour of paint has to go on separately. And this is the final part of the printing process. Once all the colours have been laid onto the t-shirts, they come through here and go into the big oven where they're cooled off. They go through so the print gets time to press, come through the other side, boxed off and then sent to all our stores. We'll show you that in a second. Once it goes through all the printing process, through the heater, Here's one of our new range of the Utopia singlets. It can be purchased online store at peopleaustralia.com. Get on there to have a look. Well, time now for our Plays of the Week. And after Angus Monfries presented his claim to perhaps be a commentator one day, it's over to you, Zaka, to really impress Essendon yeah. fans with your commentary of this week's Plays well, of the Week. Well, Take it away. As, I'm not as good as Angus Monfries, so I'll just throw some comments. But here's a great goal from Kramers. He, he likes to work a bit of magic. And, um, yeah, I don't know how he just kicked that, but rolled through from about 45 out, getting tackled. So, um, yeah, that's a great goal there. Um, this is Andrew Welsh and Joe Watson, both copping hits here. They both put their heads over every week. And Andrew Welsh had a nice purple egg on his head um, Monday morning. It was quite funny to see. And 
Um, I think Job cops one here. and He um, looked out to it. He did look out to it. And when he came off the bench, he thought it was actually round one. So <laughs> he was quite out of it. Um, here's a Nathan Lovett Murray, that's probably the strongest man at the footy club. Smashes Kerr here, which was good because he Kerr sort of got the better of us, of us during the day. And Nat Rack gives him a bit of love here. And um, yeah, that's a great hit there. He's the strongest, is he? He's, yeah, I think he's the strongest. Lifts the heaviest. Him and Stu Cramery, so. Okay, well, Stu Cramery is 19% uh, of the votes here for his magic snap. Only 5% for Welsh and Watson, and a resounding win there for Nathan Lovett Murray and his massive hit on Daniel Kerr. Thank you very much for joining us today. Good luck on the weekend. We wish you all the best for this big clash against Port Adelaide. Hopefully we can sole up a spot in September and you can play in your first final. Yeah, no, yeah that would be good if I can. Okay, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time on The Bomber Show.